This video provides a brief walkthrough of an R notebook we've created that shows how to import Network Canvas data into R and also provides a few brief examples of data visualization and analysis. As you'll see, it's uh, you know, heavily reliant on the EgoR vignettes that we have modified to work with Network Canvas data. And that's because we use the EgoR package quite extensively in this example to import the data and do some basic functions on the networks. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just bring in these packages that we need. That's the EUR package, the SNA package, and ggplot. Um, then we're simply identifying the folder in which our data is stored and separately bringing in uh, each of the types of data that are exported in the uh, CSV format when you export Network Canvas data. Um, and then kind of aggregating each of those types of data into a single data frame um, uh, in R. So this first chunk of code is bringing in alter data. Um, second is bringing in edgeless data, and the third is bringing in ego data. These little groups of functions are, are just identifying those types of data using the read CSV function and then binding them together as a single data frame. So in the end, hopefully we have three distinct data frames for each of those types of data. So we ran that um, as you know, all good kind of data analysis, data management practices uh, should rely on. We then want to kind of visualize that data to make sure that it's uh, you know, imported correctly. And here we have, you know, at least looking at the alter data, we have what we think uh, you know, it, it looks correctly as it should. Um, we have these ego IDs, we have the alter IDs here, and then we have the actual information that we collected during the interview, including you know, the name of the alter, the communication frequency, um, where they were laid out on a sociogram, and then one characteristic here, if they're a family member or not. You know, also required um, quite frequently in data management and uh, you know, data analysis, we're going to do some simple recoding. Oftentimes, the uh, data will not be coded in the way that we need it for analysis in the actual protocol um, that we're using to collect the data. So here, we're just recoding um, some basic information about the family membership and then the frequency of communication so it looks better on our visualizations. We'll start off by uh, kind of combining those three uh, types of data, the alter ego and edgeless data, into an ego R um, object. And that's what this function here does. Um, then we're going to move on to some basic visualizations of that data. So in this case, we're going to start with looking at a single egocentric network. Um, and again, we're doing some recoding here, simply assigning colors to each types of type of communication frequency. So first we're grabbing a single ego network, um, we're doing some renaming, and then we're assigning those colors. And then finally, we're going to plot the data of that single egocentric network itself. And here we can see this is one egocentric network. In, the, in this case, the participant identified a dyad in their network, and then this uh, component of four individuals that has a triangle, and then uh, one person that's only connected to a single person. Oftentimes, you know, the goal of a visualization is not just to visualize a single egocentric network because we're, you know, we're often collecting more than a single interview. Um, we want to, you know, aggregate that information on a visualization to look at across multiple egocentric networks. And there's actually some uh, cool techniques for that. This is just a simple example of that. Um, and it's, it's a much more complex visualization than our last one. In this case, we have all three egocentric networks uh, that we imported. And they're showing up separately as three different figures. And we have a lot of information in this you know, kind of one um, overall figure. Um, in each of these uh, you know, egocentric networks, the quadrants of the circle provide information about the frequency of communication with each alter, as well as the inner versus outer circle provides information on if they're a family member or not. So in this case, the outer circle is for family members, the inner circle is for those that are not family members. Um, and then as you can see, the quadrants identify communication frequency. In addition, we also have the information about uh, connections between alters, as indicated by these kind of gray connections um, between the alters. So it's really a lot of information, but it's just a, you know, another example of ways in which we can look across egocentric networks um, to look at uh, different patterns of connection or relationship between the uh, participant and their alters. So you know, visualizations are often a great way to understand our data. But you know, we also want to do data analysis. So there's a lot of functions that can help with that. These are some basic ones. So for example, we can get summary uh, information on our egocentric networks. In this case, as I've mentioned, we have three different egocentric networks. Um, and this gives us you know, min, max on network size, uh, the average size, the density, uh, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we might want to look at the ego, uh, den ego network density. Um, and in this case, it provides us with a data frame where uh, these are the ego IDs, and it's aggregated to the density for each egocentric network. 
you know, uh, sometimes we want to do analysis in other packages. In this case, you know, for example, the SNA package, which is a, uh, you know, one of the most frequently used packages for network analysis in R. Uh, so the first function here is going to be converting uh, uh, in our uh, egocentric networks into a SNA object. Um, we're going to be doing some applying some functions to get you know the degree here um, for those networks um, and a little data management and then the plot itself. And what we see here is simply just a histogram of the degree. Um, so that's just you know kind of providing information uh, aggregate uh, of the ego network. However, you know, we often don't want to stop with that. We actually want to know, for example, um, how, you know, network characteristics are correlated or associated um, with uh, participant characteristics. Um, so in this case, we can look at this basic visualization, uh, um, again, using ggplot here. Um, and this is going to show us the association between network density and how much an individual enjoys going to conferences. So maybe we see a slight negative correlation here. Um, but basically, this is just showing, you know, how you can get egocentric net, uh, network data. Um, you can join that with information about the ego. Um, and then you can plot that information to, you know, visually examine it. Um, so, you know, each of these dots represents one of the three egocentric networks we have. Uh, the Enjoy Conferences information came from the ego data itself. So that one of the, the third data frame that we brought in. And then the density data was from the, uh, you know, network information uh, for each of those participants. Again, these are very basic examples, um, and uh, the main purpose uh, of this workbook is really just to show how to bring in data and how you can do basic uh, analysis and visualization. Uh, as I said, all of this is available on our GitHub, um, including the data files and the protocol used uh, to create those data files. Um, so hopefully you can use those as a guide uh, to you know, work with your own data and uh, data analysis in R.